in a previous video, I showed you how to do this independent sample z-test for proportions by hand. So we walked through this slide and discussed the meaning of everything. Um, in this little video, I'm going to show you how to do this in SPSS. So the first thing to note is that of the males, we have 136 yeses out of 240. So if you subtract 240 from 136, that means that there were 104 male no's. Um, next thing we need to note is that there are 174 yeses among the females. Subtract that from 260, you get 86 yeses. Okay, so remember 104 no's among males, 86 no's among males and females. So let's go over to SPSS. Here's the way we're going to set this up. Um, I'm going to go into the variable view, and we're, we need three variables. So let's have gender, and then we need another variable. Let's call it response. And the third variable we're going to have is the count. Now, it, it really helps if you define some uh, value labels. So if I go over to the values and I add some labels. Let's say the value 1 is for males, value 2 is for females. Go hit OK and we're done. Now for response, let's have the value 1 be yes and 0 be no. That's kind of a convention to have 1 yes, 0 no. We're now ready to type in the data. We need four rows of data. So I'll do the males so we'll do male, male, female, female. So the first two rows will be males, second two rows will be females. Now we need the responses, so I'll type no, so zero's a no, one's a yes, zero's a no, one's a yes. Now let's see, how many male no's did we have? I think we had 104. How many male yeses did we have? We had, I think we had 136. Female no's, 86. Female yeses, 174. So we've now entered our data. Uh, before we can run this analysis, though, we need to weight cases. So we're going to go up to data and weight cases, way at the bottom. And we want to weight by this count variable. Now, keep an eye in the lower right. As soon as I hit OK, There's going to be an indicator that, very, that uh, we've weighted our cases. So let's get back to the data set. So lower right now says weights are on. So by weighting cases, what I've done is I've said this row is to count 104 times, this row counts 136 times, and so forth. Now to run that independent sample t-test, what we're going to do is exactly what we did with the independent sample t-test. Go up to Analyze, Compare Means, Independent Sample, T-Test. Now, the grouping variable is going to be gender. We need to define the groups. Remember, I used one for one of the groups, uh, two for the other group. So go ahead and continue. And then responses are dependent variable. Now, Go hit OK, and SPSS takes a couple minutes here to think. And let's go look at what we have in our output. So first note that we have 260 females, 240 males, good news. Um, here are the means. Remember the mean of a 0, 1 variable is just the percentage. So you could say 67% of females like product A, whereas only 57% of males. The difference was 10%. If you go back to what we computed here, the difference was 10%. So um, the difference between those two means is the same as the difference D hat. Let's come down to our independent sample um, box. Remember what I said, you always assume equal variances when you're testing the equality of two proportions. Why? Because the equality of two proportions assumed by the null implies the variances are equal. So we're going to use the, the, always use the, the top row. 
And what you find is here's the mean difference, 0.1026. That's the d hat. Let's see, the standard error of the difference is 0 0.04329. What did we find? 0 0.043. Okay, this is off very slightly because um, of, of degrees of freedom, but don't worry about that tiny difference. Uh, the p-values are the same, 0 0.018. What did we find? 0 0.018. So that's how we run this in SPSS.